What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitic 3D Printing. I'm excited for today because today we're gonna take an old monitor and we're gonna make a little smart board to hang on your wall. Welcome back guys. So today I have this old, I think this is the 20 or 21 inch monitor that I've had for a long time. It was my dad's old gaming computer monitor and I just inherited it from him because he went to a laptop. And Tom, uh, so Tom Salinger, Tom's 3D, um, he has been working on a new smart board. He's using like a 55 inch TV. And it's kind of more like an organizational board. So it kind of tells you some different stats. There's different software you can use to make this work. Um, I've actually wanted to make one for years. And I wanted to make the one that you could hide behind a mirror use a piece of two-way mirror over it and like add it to like the top of my wife's, she has a big full length mirror, put it in there. She could like look at the weather and the counter for the day as she's making herself beautiful as always. I just never really did it. And seeing him do it really, you know, inspired me to get back on the horse and actually do it. So I went ahead and started it. I did want to start recording a little earlier um, so that I actually could get more in the video, but I got a little impatient. So I want to tell you just what I did in the beginning and then we'll kind of go from there. So the first thing I did was get this thing apart. I did do a live stream on that. So if you guys, I'll put a link for that down below if you guys want to check out that live stream. And that is where I actually disassembled this and started modeling this case, which I've got three iterations here and we'll go over that in a second. And it was very simple to do. Now with this monitor, they're all different though. But on this one, this back panel here, this is where the electronics is housed, it floats. It was actually held in by just a few pieces of tape. So all I did was is I had to move it up a little bit because I need to fit some things here on the back and I needed the clearance at the bottom. So I went ahead and just shifted that up a little bit, making sure not to pinch any of the cables, make sure I had enough clearance for all the cables and make sure there's a ribbon cable up here. Didn't want to pinch that either. Also under here is, well, this is my front panel, which I just kind of, uh, I hot glued there in place. So here's where I put the front panel and I actually just wrote here real small. Uh, what each thing is. So I've got the menu, up, down, uh, info or input, uh, that's input, and then power right there. So you can just uh, use this from the back. For now, it's gonna stay like this. Later, I might actually add, uh, I might move this and add some push buttons on the bottom of the case so that you can access those without taking off the wall. But for now, that's how it's gonna be. I also threw, this monitor has speakers in it. So here's the speaker input. And for now, I'm not using them. So I just hid them underneath this piece here. So all I have to do is remove this tape, pull those out, and I can remount those speakers someplace else. Uh, I'm also using a much older monitor, so it only has DVI and VGA. So I'm using a DVI to HDMI converter here, and that's gonna what's gonna plug into the Raspberry Pi. So super simple, this is just gaffer's tape. Again, it's good enough to hold that on there. And I did mention Raspberry Pi, and I have a Raspberry Pi ready to go. And again, I also did this not on the live stream, but I did kind of talk about which case to use. And I found this very basic, very simple uh, case. That's all I need to be, something simple. It doesn't need to be anything crazy, just has to work. And I did go ahead and add in a fan, which you can hook right up to the Pi. Uh, it's just the second and third pin on the inner row, outer row, on the outer row uh, for your positive and negative. And that way this fan blows. I'm gonna have it pull away because I don't want anything to deposit on the, the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna have to pull air away from it. Give us a little bit of circulation. Now, this is just gonna mount right on the back. So I'm actually gonna end up mounting this right about here. So it's just inside all my perimeter. It's gonna fit inside the case. And that way, the HDMI here is pointing towards that way, to where that is. I have a one foot piece that should fit. Um, I'm hoping it does, because if it doesn't, oh well. Uh, but today, I'm going for just getting this done, I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a long six foot one and just coil it up in the back and kind of go from there. That should be okay for now, uh, but that's what we're gonna end up doing. And this just sits right here. I do have a wireless dongle already on this. This goes to my wireless keyboard and mouse. So that is something I can easily take off or I can hook up a wired one to it if I ever need to access it. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that dongle on here. I think eventually I'm gonna buy one of those little, they have those real little like $20 or $10 um, Bluetooth or wireless little handheld remotes. I have one for my RetroPie, uh, but I think I'm gonna buy one for this uh, just so I can just kind of hide it in the back. Whenever I need it, I can pull it out. And what I'm using for software is I'm using Dacboard. There are several different ones out there. Um, was it Mirror Squared 
or mirror to mirror, something like that. That's the one a lot of people use for the two-way mirror software. You can use either one. It doesn't actually matter what you use. I'm sure there's more out there. Um, and actually, if you know of any others that you want to recommend to people, please put a link uh, down in the uh, um, comments. Uh, the, they do get flagged when you guys put links, but I'll approve them if you guys link something legitimate. Uh, but I definitely want to see what other software is out there. For now, I'm going to use Dackboard. It does what I need it to do. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. So what I have it showing is I'm using the free version and I can do the calendar, the weather, and I'm doing a grocery list. I could do a to-do list as well if I upgrade to the $4 plan. Uh, but for now, I'm just using their absolute free version just to kind of get my feet wet with it and see if it's the software that I really like. I don't want to invest money on something that I'm not sure is going to work out to my needs. We have to attach this. Before we do any of that, let's talk about the frame that I had to make. I've got two versions here and I have my final version right here. Now, I did design this again on the live stream, so make sure you check that out. And I mismeasured a little bit. So the first time I mismeasured that this did not actually, I had about three millimeters on the width and about four millimeters on the height that was off. So it just kind of swam around there. I wanted this to be a fairly snug fit to make sure it would fit in there properly. So it was kind of swimming around. So what I did with that one is I went ahead and just used some super glue to hold the, uh, the center. So this is actually, this is what would be the top holding it. I just did some super glue there to kind of see if it would hold. I mean, it holds pretty good. You get a good flex out of that before it actually comes apart. Um, I do have a little bit of 3D glue PLA left. I don't know if I have enough to do the project with, but I might actually use super glue to hold the joint together and use some 3D glue to kind of blend it on the underside because I don't want to see that uh, on the outside because I'm leaving this 3D printed just the way it is. Also, I forgot on here, I wanted to add for, this is going to be holding the weight going this way, not these pieces, but it's going to be holding the weight this way. So what I wanted is I wanted something that I could actually screw it together and keep it together. I think that would work out better to um, than just glue because I'm waiting on the glue to fail, but these aren't the screws aren't going to fail. So I printed it again, and here I have my actual uh, connecting way. So here's how the connector goes. You can see uh, I just have it. Uh, this is for M4 bolts. Uh, so I have it um, with captive nut heads here for some nylocks and it would just kind of squeeze it together just like that. I could add glue if I want when I'm done because once I put this on, the only way to, only way to take it off, I need to like get rid of it. So once it's on, it's pretty much on and that should hold that to go together much better. I can supplement with, supplement with glue if I want, but I don't have to, so I do have that. The problem with this version is the bezel is too small. I measured the one side of, and I say bezel, it's the this clamp, this outer aluminum piece that goes around, or metal piece that goes around the screen. I measured the side and I figured it was the same all the way around. It's not. It is nine millimeters on the side, 11 millimeters on the top and bottom. So I went ahead and made the final version with a 11 or 11 and a half millimeter bezel. I reinforced the way that I did this bracket and I added in, I made sure, double checked my holes so I have two holes on this, the bottom one, so this is going to be on the side here. So this bottom one is where the power cord is going to come up and in and power everything. I'm going to use a, a, a three-prong extension cord to be grounded, and I'm going to just glue that in here. Uh, but that will actually provide the power to this. And then over here is going to be another 40 millimeter fan that's going to be coming in. And this one, I only did the hole for it. I didn't actually do the mounting holes for it because I'm not quite sure how I want to do it. I might just super glue it on there, or not super glue it, um, hot glue it on to leave it there, and that way I can pull it off later, or I might drill the holes and actually screw it on. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet with that, but for now, I have the hole at least to mount one in there, if anything, with hot glue. I did go ahead and assemble it, putting it together. I do need to, I think, sand it down. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap behind there, um, in there, so I do need to sand that down to get a nice, uh, much cleaner connection there but it does hold together very well. That's what we're gonna do right now. So that's, that's the current state I'm at right now. I've got the hot glue gun, which I'm gonna turn that on right now. I got this new Ryobi um, battery powered hot glue gun, which is fantastic, I love it. So I'll set that right there, let that warm up. And I'm gonna go ahead and super glue and weld these two together. So here we are in our final form, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and super glue and weld the top and the bottom. 
I'm gonna take apart the two sides and sand those down just to get them nice and flat. Then we'll be able to do final assembly. When I actually set the monitor in there, again, it is nice and snug, but I'm gonna go ahead and tack in some super glue uh, in a couple different points. I'm not gonna line the thing because I wanna be able to pull this off with a pair of needle nose, just pull that super glue off. But I'm gonna tack it in a few different places just to make sure it's, it's seated at the very front of this and not going to move. I do have enough clearance back here so that it is going to be away from the wall a little bit so the, the monitor can breathe and the fan will be able to move a little bit of air in the back there. Again, I don't want anything to heat up and overheat. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So stand by. I'll be back with the next part. Well, that didn't glue up as planned because my 3D gloop is dried up. It's totally um, gone. So I guess I didn't put the, there was only a little bit left in it, but I'm guessing I didn't um, put it on all the way. And it dried up on me. So uh, I did have to use a little bit of extra super glue on these on the outside. I sanded it down. You really can't tell that much. I'll take a uh, damp cloth and it'll hide kind of where I was sanding at. It'll be good enough. It dries clear. So. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a test fit to make sure it does fit one more time well enough. So that should be pretty easy to do here. All right, so we're just gonna take this, slide you in, got the bottom piece, slide you in there as well, and it fits. A little bit of extra space on that, but that's okay. I will get that um, secured. So I need to get a ball head, get these tightened down, and then we'll see how that looks. And there's the first look of it. There it is. I think that looks quite outstanding, in my opinion. I'm not biased at all. Okay, so I've got this heated up. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure these are all nice and tight against here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack this in, and then we'll tack in the Raspberry Pi. So it should only take a second here. And right, now we're going to stick the Pi down in here. Gonna, actually, let's do the fan first. So uh, I have this little Noctua um, 20 mil a 40 by 20 fan. I'm just gonna go ahead and just tack that into place right there. Just try to line it up as best I can. All right, so that's in place. All these strings from the hot glue. Fans in there. So I'm gonna get a little, um, we'll figure out a little power for this, whether I run it off of a little power block or something like that. Uh, we'll see how that ends up going. So for the power, uh, I actually need to unplug a few things because I need to steal a power from something else. So this is the one I was going to use. Again, it's a grounded uh, extension cord, basically. And uh, of course, it doesn't fit through there. I was measuring it for this actual connector here. So I might have to cut this to have it fit. Either way, we'll do a, we'll do a test here before I... I end up doing that here. So let's get this. And I need to get the HDMI cable, which is right here. Just fits in. So this is the reason why I had to move this actual center control. Because I'm using such an old monitor and it has this adapter, I needed the, 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 the uh, space. And this just plugs into here. 
like so. There's my HDMI cable. Although again, that one foot one should fit there without a problem. That will help me out. Uh, and then I need a power cord. I swear the one I measured fit in here. I swear it did. But either way, that does fit into there like so. I have an old uh, Apple charger that puts out 2.1 amps that we're going to test out and see how this goes. So we're going to boot the Pi now. Power's in there to boot the Pi. I have to actually plug in the power. Derp, 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 derp. All right. Plug this in. Boot that up. And then I can hit the power on here. Oh, there we go. We're cooking. Now this should auto boot into my actual um, setup, the DAC board that I built. <sighs> so we're booting Raspberry Pi. Should go to the desktop for a minute and then it should automatically load from there. It's connecting to the Wi-Fi so we can get its updates. This is just running Debian. I'll link the uh, tutorial below that I use to actually make this thing happen. Uh, there it goes. So it's starting. So here we have the, today's date and time. Got my grocery list. Here's our weather. And then here's my uh, actual calendar. So this is the setup that I have right now. I don't know if this is uh, what I'll end up keeping because again, there's lots of different software and everything that you can use on this. And there's lots of different uh, ways that you can set this up. This is just the free version way to make that happen. I did model in some keyholes. So all that's left to do is mount this on the wall and figure out this power situation and go from there. So I'm gonna stop the video right here. I'll be right back with me actually mounting this and getting it on the wall. I'll have the power <laughs> fiasco sorted out. I'll figure that out here in a moment and then we can continue on. And well, I guess then after that, it's pretty much done. All right, so here it is. It's up, it's running, it's super simple. Now all I gotta do is plug it in. Now while it boots up, I'll tell you, the actual spacing of the keyholes was 17 inches exactly. Didn't know it was gonna be that, but hey, that's what it worked out to be. Super simple and easy. I ended up also picked up a little uh, Bluetooth keyboard here that I was able to just pair with the Raspberry Pi. Had to do a little bit of, um, editing with that, how to do some tutorials because adding the uh, Bluetooth is not like super easy. Had to do like the X-Utils and then uh, had to do a little code to enable the GUI for Bluetooth to be able to do it. I mean, it's, it's a Raspbian thing, I don't know, but that's just what it was. I also am still working on the sleeping monitor issue. I do not know what it is. I have tried several fixes and I'm trying to figure out what that is. I'm gonna go on the forums and start asking some folks and see just what I can do to try and get this working, why the monitor keeps falling asleep. It does it after about two or three days. I kinda of don't know what the problem is, but I'll figure that eventually. But either way, it's done. It's getting some cool air right here from a nice uh, 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter Noctua fan. There's another uh, fan mounted right on the Raspberry Pi, which is right behind here. So the fan blows right on there, gets that cool air on the Raspberry Pi. So it's not an overheating issue. I'm just not exactly sure what it is, but I've been super happy with this. This is actually right in our living room. We have our changing table. We have our kids laundry here and it just works out so well to be able to come up here, see what the weather is, see what else is going on the calendar and how busy we are or not. And I'm super happy with this so far. So yeah, I think this turned out super well. So thank you guys for watching now. Uh, this has been an awesomely fun project. I want to thank Tom, uh, Tom Sandler, uh, the other, he's a big YouTuber and, and uh, he's been a big inspiration to me when I started 3D printing him and uh, Joel Telling, been big inspirations to me. And this is just basically me taking something that I've wanted to do forever. I've been just procrastinating, 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 seeing someone else do it. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna put in the time, I'm gonna do it. Modeled my own 3D printed case for this. So I'll actually have a design for you down in the video description. If you guys want to go ahead and download this, all you have to do is change the size of your screen, which is the very first sketch in millimeters, change that, the, the height and uh, width of it, and this should scale to that, should scale. But either way, there will be a link for where you can download this uh, in the video description. I'll put links to the software that I'm using, and all of that will be here. So it's and, uh, the tutorials that I use to make it happen, all of that will all be linked down there so you guys can actually check this out and do this on your own. And I hope this inspires you the same way I've been inspired. It has been, again, a truly awesome adventure. 
Here's what I forgot to mention. I had to split this into four parts, this frame. Uh, so there will be four bodies in the end that you have to print. You have to print this on a large printer. This is printed on the, um, well, actually, depending on your screen, a smaller screen print, a smaller printer. But I had to print all four of these at once on the CR10. So this took about 300 grams of filament to print with a 15% infill. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be strong enough to hold this on the wall. So thank you for watching guys again, I think several times. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's been a super fun project and I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I have. Leave me a comment down below what you guys thought about it. If you guys want to stay tuned to what's going on, become a subscriber. That way you know when cool projects like this get posted and you hit that notification button and you get the email or push notification on your mobile device when that does happen. If you guys want to support me, help me fund to do crazy cool projects like this, become a patron. Don't be a dollar more. I appreciate it. All the money comes to help me build a channel. And again, the one-time donation links and the affiliate links down below with the coupon codes, all of that, a little slice of what you buy at the affiliate links, no cost to you. Come here and help me out the channel. So I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, happy printing.